this article by Tom Friedman. And, you know, I, I, I've i almost made a living ridiculing Tom Friedman. I've, I've, I've taken pot shots at him in my books. I've written articles, uh, you know, joking about him. Every now and then Thomas Friedman says something that's really, you know, profound and worth listening to. And the majority of the time, it, it's, it's, in my opinion, is gibberish. But he, he nailed this. Except at the very end, he goes, well, you know, I don't really know if I believe this or not. But, he, you know, the question, he opens the, the, the op-ed piece. It's in today's New York Times. And it's titled, Take a Deep Breath, ISIS in the Arab World. As Republicans in the House of Representatives are getting ready to show how, you know, huff and bro- we're going to huff and puff and blow their house down. We're going to show how tough we are on bad guys. How dare they behead a couple of our people. You know, all this kind of stuff. And we just have to ask the question, if we're not in that region fighting against these crazy Sunnies, and that's not to say all Sunnis are crazy, but these particular ones are, if we're not fighting against them, would the rational Sunnis in the region be taking them on? Because they would be the ones that would have to do it. Or would the Shia take them on? I mean, Assad is Shia, Iran is Shia, they're perfectly willing. I mean, we've been pretending not to coordinate with these guys, but I think it's time for us to just say, this is not our fight. You know, Dick Cheney wanted to wanted to sell the oil in Iraq, and he wanted Halliburton not to go bankrupt anymore. You know, he, he screwed us. He and George W. Bush killed a bunch of Americans, killed hundreds of thousands of Iraqis and Afghans. It created somewhere between five and eight million refugees, bombed two countries back to the Stone Age, covered one with so, so heavily Iraq with the depleted uranium that their birth, birth defect rate now is higher than any other country in the history of the world. I mean, we have just utterly destroyed a couple of countries. Isn't it time for us to say enough already? Yeah, we screwed up. Mosul... You know, the second largest city in Iraq is under ISIS control. How long is that going to last? At a certain point, the people are going to say, enough already. You know, we've, we've seen modernity. We, we know what the real world is like. We're sick and tired of our, of our daughters not being able to go to school, of our women being locked up in the house, of the morality police chasing us around of alcohol and music and dancing and photographs being banned. You know, England went through this with Cromwell. (laughs) It's not like we don't know how this movie ends. right, the British said, bring back the damn king. He was an SOP, but at least he was our SOP. And send Cromwell and his buddies, the Puritans and the Pilgrims, over to to Massachusetts and let them do their damage there. And boy, did they. We're still suffering from that. But this is not our fight. We don't, you know, the United States does not have any, any official position on, on whether, whether it's, you know, Ali or, or what's his name? I'm sorry, Ali is the, uh, the, the godfather of the Shia. I forget who the Sunni is. But it's, you know, whether it's Mohammed's, what, son-in-law or whether it's his mentee, his, uh, you know, this is not our battle. Any more than determined, you know, any more than when Jefferson, you know, was running for president in 1800 and he said, you know, the Congregationalists and the Presbyterians are both hoping that I'll pick one of them as the official religion of America. But they're both wrong, because I've sworn on the altar of eternal God hostility over, the mi- over, over any form of tyranny over the minds of men. I mean, he was taken on the priests. He called them the Vedas irritable, uh, the, the genus irrit- irritable Vedum. The, 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 the species, the genus of cranky priests. Well, this is what we have in the Middle East. Why is it our job to resolve this problem? Now, I, you know, you can build a case that, that we spent trillions of dollars destroying a country, and that country is a wreck right now. But I don't think the solution is for us to go in and say, ha, ta-ta, here's the Americans, we're going to rebuild your country. 
No, we should do it like we did with the Marshall Plan in Europe. We should say, here's some money. Why don't you build cement factories? Why don't you build steel factories? Why don't you build uh, road paving factories? Put your own people back to work building your own country. And a lot of this money is going to be gifts because, after all, we screwed it up to begin with. Some of it will be loans. You can pay us back when you can get around to it. The, you know, the only catch on this is that you have to, have, you have to uh, allow women to have equal status in society with men. And if you don't want that, fine. Come back in 200 years. But, I, you know, in the cities that ISIS has taken over, it's, you know, other than the, other than the uh, just like in Saudi Arabia, other than the morality police going around with whips, it's pretty stable. Let's just butt the hell out. That's why, why is it our job to fight Saudi Arabia and Turkey's war? Even if, you know, yeah, maybe we imposed it on them, but if Saudi Arabia hadn't helped 9-11. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. Which takes us back to the 28 pages that the Bush administration redacted about all the Saudi help to the 9-11 guys. If that hadn't happened, if we hadn't had 9- none of this would have happened. 